Hey, this is Robert, and today I'm going to do a tutorial in a program called vMix. This is vMix 16, which just came out not too long ago. The software has been around for a while, but we've just recently had a number of people email or call and ask about whether or not our studios and backgrounds work with vMix. And so, I thought I would do some tutorials just to show you some different workflows inside of vMix. I'm going to do two to three different tutorials that highlight the different ways you can use the backgrounds. And this is the second tutorial I've done in vMix. I'd recommend you go and watch the first tutorial I did, which goes through the process of using some of our weather graphics inside of vMix. The other tutorials I will add use the built-in Virtual Studio inputs, and I'll show you how to use our backgrounds using the Virtual Studio inputs. Those tutorials will show you how to use the built-in camera moves and other features of the Virtual Studio input. But this tutorial is more of a simplified workflow, basically one camera, one background, and one graphic animation. So what you've got here is a talent shot. This is just a looping talent shot of somebody who has been filmed on a green screen. This is kind of in place for your live video camera feed. Instead of being a video editor, vMix is more of a live switching solution that can be run as software inside your computer. It basically allows you to input multiple cameras, multiple graphics, animations, and on-air graphics like lower thirds, and allows you to combine all those elements together in a live environment that you can then stream to YouTube or any other video streaming service. This one here is kind of a stand-in for the main camera input that you would have for your live shot. If you had someone on camera, you'd be filming them on a green screen and then combining them with the studio in real time and replacing it with a virtual background. The next layer here is our virtual studio layer. It's just a simple studio background loop. You can see there's a little bit of animation happening in the background. And then this final layer is the motion graphic that shows up inside the screen. And you can kind of see that we positioned, scaled, and rotated it to make it fit. So first, let me close all of these. Next, we will go over how to add inputs and graphics to the scene. Unlike a regular video editor, where you import your file assets, then use them in your timeline, vMix is based around inputs. So you have a camera input, you can have video files, but they're still considered inputs, and you add inputs down here where this add input button is in the bottom left. And you can have any number of different types of inputs. Video, which is what we are using, DVD, camera. So if you had a camera hooked up to your computer, you could choose that as an input. You can use webcams, you can use a video card that converts HDMI to a video feed. Any kind of camera capture you can get into your computer, you can then select as a camera input inside vMix. So, you can select video here and then click browse to find your video files. The other way that you can do it is to set up a folder with all of your video assets and then just drag and drop them into the inputs area in vMix. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click my piece of footage. Like I said, this is a stand-in for our live camera feed and drag it into vMix. The next thing I'm going to do is drag the virtual studio. This virtual studio is a 1920 by 1080 HD QuickTime animation. And then this motion graphic that will be used in the monitor in the studio will be dragged into the program as an input. vMix is set up to have four simultaneous layers that you can then layer on top of each other during a production. That's what the one, two, three, and four buttons are for right there. So what I'm going to do is set up my layers to start with, just because I know what order they are going to be in. Four is the top layer, so I'm going to put the talent layer on the top layer. I'm also going to click loop here so we can see her continue to move in the scene. The next layer is going to be the studio layer, so I'm going to select number three for that and loop it as well. And then the final animation is going to be on the second layer, and I'll loop this one as well. So the first thing that we've got to do is remove the green in the green screen in our shoot. So we'll double click the chroma key layer and go to the color key setting. Check mark the color key box, choose the eyedropper, and sample the green in your scene. Next, click this auto chroma key button. I also like to click the anti-aliasing box, which kind of smooths out the extra jagged edges on the key. Now, you can kind of adjust your sliders to dial in your chroma key effect. You can see right off the bat that we've removed the green from the scene, but she's on the wrong side of the screen. 
This happens a lot when you shoot. You don't realize which direction you need to be shooting, so the talent could be facing the wrong direction. As long as there's not text or a logo on our shirt or anything, you can flip this footage horizontally to put your talent on the correct side of the screen. So in vMix, the way you do that is to double click the input again, go to General, click on the mirror box, and that will flip her right over there. She's still a little bit to the right, and so I'm going to push her to the left just a little bit. We do that by going to Position and adjusting the Pan X. We can move her up or down, left or right, so I'll pan her left and right just a little bit. So now we've got our talent in our studio, but you can see our studio still has this green screen in the studio monitor. We can't see our animation behind that. And so I'm going to double click on the studio layer, go to color key, select the color key box, click the eyedropper tool, sample the green in the monitor, click auto chroma key, click anti-aliasing, and which smooths everything out. Now you can see the animation popping through behind. So the final thing we're going to do is adjust and scale the positioning and size of the motion graphic so it fits inside your screen. We'll do that by double clicking the animation input layer, go to position, move it down so we can see, we'll zoom out a little bit, move it to the right, move it up, and like so. Then we'll rotate. You can rotate on any axis, so X, Y, or Z. You can choose which one by clicking the box right there. So our Y axis is the one we want to rotate just a little bit. And so we'll rotate it, and then we'll just move over to here, and then we can generally get it in place. And so now you've got all three layers in place. We have our talent on the top layer, our virtual studio in the middle layer, and then our motion graphic in the background. Now, one other thing we can do is we could preset another piece of footage that would show up in the monitor in the scene. So if you were doing a live show and wanted to switch from a logo to a video or some other graphic, you can go ahead and set up the footage ahead of time and then just queue it up when you're ready for it during your production. So let's just add another input, then double click it. We'll give it the same settings that we gave the other background footage. And so now we have our talent studio. We have two pieces of footage that we can choose between. And all we have to do to switch between these two is just click the number two input. You could also have one on the first layer and you could select and reselect like so. The last thing, and this is a really nice feature in vMix, is that you can save all your settings. So if you want to recall the setup, you can just load it right up again. So I'll call this one Virtual Studio Set 3. I'll click Save. And now, if I ever need to recall the whole setup, I can just go open up Virtual Studio Set 3, and it loads up all the presets, all the files, all the inputs, and everything I need to get rolling on camera. So vMix is a great piece of software, especially if you're running a live show. It's very reasonably priced, and it's great for any kind of live streaming setting. I know a lot of schools, churches, YouTube shows, they're all using it. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'll put a link to our site in the description, so you're more than welcome to click on that. And I'll also have more information on the backgrounds we make and how to use them in different programs. You can also leave feedback in the comments section below if you'd like. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and don't forget we'll have a couple more vMix videos that'll show some other features of the program. Bye!